All right. Modern JavaScript. Why the hell would I talk about modern JavaScript at a Livewire conference when the whole point of Livewire is to avoid writing JavaScript? And I'm going to answer all of that, but first, let me explain how did I get here. So my name is Philip, and we can leave it at that, but if you need to know, it's pronounced Ganitz. And I've made this thing called Bond, which brings modern JavaScript to Laravel Blade. And I started working on this a couple weeks before this year's Laracon. I tweeted a bunch about it. And it gained some traction on Twitter. I received a lot of positive feedback. But it really blew up when I made this video, where I actually explained how it all works. And a lot of community members have shared it. And ultimately, it led to this message. So we hopped on a call. And Caleb has basically asked me whether I want to give a talk about Bond at this conference. And my response to that was, how could I say no to that? So here we are. And when Aaron Francis tells you to put yourself out there and publish your work, you should listen to him, because it really does work. But the idea for this project actually started a long time before that, at my last job, where we built a trading dashboard that looked something like this. And we've decided to build this with Livewire. It actually started off a lot simpler than this, because we were more focused on the back end. Choosing Livewire actually allowed us to move really fast. But we kept adding more and more stuff to it. And at some point, we were preparing to do this big redesign that added even more charts, more dynamic cards, more interactive elements, and so on. And so we thought, maybe we should rewrite this in a technology that actually embraces that. So we gave ourselves two weeks to explore the major frameworks, choose the one that we want to work with, and plan out the rewrite. We've tried Vue, React, Svelte. And at the end of those two weeks, we've decided to stick with Livewire. <laughs> it, simply wasn't worth it for us. And working with those technologies was nice, but the complexity of those frameworks hit us like a bag full of bricks. Every problem had 20 different solutions, and everything just seemed more complex than it should be, especially after working exclusively with Livewire for a couple of years. And so we've decided we're going to push the limits of Livewire even further. And I believe it was a good decision because no one was complaining about the dashboard. In fact, all of our users loved it. But the experience has actually inspired me because I really enjoyed the experience of writing the code in those modern frameworks. And so I thought, can we have some of that? So I started experimenting. I thought, we already have components in Blade. What if we could just put a script tag at the top of the file where we could write proper JavaScript? We could import things. Maybe we could use TypeScript. You know, we could have some way of defining reactive data. Maybe we could have props. Maybe we could borrow this JSX-like syntax to like, distinguish the JavaScript parts from HTML and Blade. And either you find this interesting, or you're asking yourself, why? Why would I use this when we already have Livewire? It's now faster than it was ever before. Caleb is doing so much work to shield us from the madness of today's front-end development. Why more JavaScript? And the reason is that Livewire still has limitations. Well, it has one big limitation. It doesn't really come from Livewire. It comes from Blade. So what is it? Well, it's server rendered. Shocker, I know. But it simply means that every UI interaction has a potential to take two, three, or 400 milliseconds, especially if your network is slow. Before I go any further, I want to say that this is fine for most apps and most users. 
developers are obsessed with making everything instant and implementing these optimistic updates, myself included. But the reality is most users can't even tell a difference between something being instant and something taking 300 milliseconds. And you can take my word for this because when I was working on this project, I actually wanted to show my girlfriend what am I working on, explain it to her, who's with me today. And I've built these two demos, one with Livewire and one with JavaScript, where every UI interaction was instant. And I thought, like, this is something tangible that she will understand, and she did, but it wasn't so obvious to her, and it definitely wasn't as big of a deal to her as it was to me. And this is true for most users, because users are used to waiting. As long as you give them some visual indication that something is happening on the server, which you will get for free if you use something like Flux, you know, if you use the Flux button and you add a wire click to it, it will show a spinner while the request is processing, and that's enough. But there is a certain type of apps where this might make a difference. And maybe you saw this TikTok. You can probably see how two or three or 400 milliseconds might actually make a difference to her, right? But this doesn't just have to be a specific type of app. You have some interactions, like for example, if you're building a child interface, when you type in a message and you hit the send button, ideally you want that message to show up in the list of messages immediately. And that's because all of us do this interaction hundreds of times a day, and there's already an expectation of it being instant, right? I would bet you that any single chat app that you use, when you type in that message and send that, hit that send button, the message will show up instantly, and if that doesn't happen in your app, your users might think that your app is slow. Or maybe you're building an AI chat app, and you want to stream markdown responses from the server. And you could do this on the back end, but there's no good way to render markdown partially, so what you have to do is with each new chunk, re-render the entire response and send that to the front end but you can probably see how much data you're going to waste by doing that, especially if the, if the message gets too long. Or maybe you just need to implement some client interaction, like reacting to a mouse movement, or you need a third-party char library, web sockets, maybe your app needs a timer. All of these things require things to be done on the front end with JavaScript. But you already know this, because if you're using Livewire, you've also used Alpine, right? And Alpine's great, super easy to use. It gives you all of these helpful directives for collapsing diffs, masking inputs, anchoring elements to another elements. And for that reason, I've built Bond on top of Alpine.js. And really, Bond is just Alpine. We're going to use the same mental model of defining these objects of reactive data. We're still going to have all of those directives, helpers, magics available to you. And because Livewire is kind of built on top of Alpine.js, Bond works really well with Livewire. But now, if Bond is really just Alpine, why would you use Bond? Because you can already do all of those things I've mentioned with Alpine. And the simple answer to this is developer experience. If you've ever used, if you've ever built a more complex Alpine.js component with 10 or 20 lines of JavaScript in an HTML attribute with no syntax highlighting, no error checking, and God forbid, autocomplete, you probably know what I'm talking about. Or maybe you've decided to extract the JavaScript into a separate file, but now you've lost a big benefit of Alpine, which is that co-location. You want to have everything in one place, and it's what all of these modern JavaScript frameworks give you. Or maybe you've built a Blake component that has some Alpine JS code in it, but you also need to use some data from outside of that file. So how do you rely on those variables always being available outside of that, outside of that file? Now it's easier to break things because, you know, rename the variable in one file and 
if you forget to do that in the other file, it's going to break. Maybe you've tried to fix that with passing those variables into a Blake component using props. So, so you've passed in that JavaScript variable into the Blake component as a string, and then you've rendered that with PHP inside JavaScript. Not ideal. So font fixes all of that. When you add that script tag to your Blake file, it will automatically get bundled by V, which is the reason why you can import anything, you can even use TypeScript, or you can use any modern JavaScript syntax, and V will simply take care of it. You'll also get IDE support, so you get syntax highlighting, error checking, and autocomplete for all your variables inside that script tag and also in the template. When you use that script tag, it will automatically isolate that component from its outside scope so it's more predictable and it works more like those modern JavaScript frameworks. But now when you need to get that data into that component, you use props. These are defined in that mount function in JavaScript. And I've also added support for else statement, which is currently not in Alpine JS, but I found myself needing that more and more as I've done more run and templating. And there's one more feature I want to show you, which is error handling. If you use Alpine, you know that it can sometimes get difficult to debug. And I believe the main reason for that is that Alpine JS runs on that rendered HTML, and when an error happens, it tells you in what HTML element that error happens, but you still need to figure out where that is in your blade file, or source file. And because Bond integrates with both Alpine and Blade, what if we could show the errors like this, where you actually get a preview of where the error happened in that Blade file? And what's even cooler than that is that when you get an error, you can actually click on that file name. It will show you where the error happened right in your depth tool without even leaving your browser. So, Hopefully you find this interesting, but now let's take a look at what you can build with it. So I've prepared this AI chat app where I already asked it to write some Laravel code, but I'm gonna ask it to can you write more. Now, I want you to notice that when I hit the send button, the message will show up instantly, right? And now we're getting the, the stream markdown response that is being rendered on the front end. And I've implemented a couple more of these optimistic UI updates in here. For example, when you rename a chat, when I hit the enter, it'll just show up instantly there. This also works for deleting things. Oh, and by the way, this was already throttled down to slow 4G, and every single request took 600 milliseconds, but you would never know this because it's all happening on the front. Now, I'll show you a couple more things. I've also implemented infinite scrolling here. Right, so when I scroll down, it'll load more chats, do this a couple more times. And you'll notice that these requests are pretty small, 1.8 kilobytes. And the reason for that is there's no HTML in here. This is all just JSON. And the reason for that is that I've actually developed this new way of communicating with Livewire, where you're only sending data from the back end to the front end but it doesn't get sent back and synchronized with Livewire all the time. And it works in more similar way to inertia, right? Now, if I clear this out, and I try to search for something, so we have this new title, you'll again see that 
We're only sending the data of those search results. And what's cool is that if I now remove this, there's no extra request being sent. And we still have all of those chats that we've loaded previously available without doing any requests to the server. So now I want to show you a little bit of what the code looks like. So this is the main component of, of the chat. And as you can see, it's pretty much just normal live wire. Yes, we have some new uh, attributes here, and this enables that new way of communicating I mentioned, but it's pretty much just live wire. Here we have the script tag, we have the mount function, and this is basically the same as using Alpine that data, except you don't need to name the component or anything like that. Bond will just automatically inject this data to the root component in which you're working. You need the template. It's, again, all just blade. We're not using blade directives here because we're using Calpine since we're doing stuff on the front end. But you just have simple, normal blade components. So this is the component for every single message in that chat. And you can see that in here we're accepting a prop, which is this message. And this is typed to a TypeScript interface so that when you actually do props, the message, that, you'll get autocomplete for all the properties of that message. And this is just being passed in here as a message from the for loop, right? Now, in here, we have the template. And this is where, this is where I want to show you that JSX syntax, which hasn't been implemented yet, but this is what I imagine it to look like. Right? So normally, I'm going to go back a little bit. This is what the code would look like with normal Alpine. Right? So you have your regular template with an if tag, and here's the else statement. And you'll notice that this else statement actually needs to be inside of that if statement. And this, this is just something that's required for this to work properly with, with Alpine. But if we have that new JSX syntax, we can just do this, clean it up a little bit, and we can refactor it to this makes the code a lot cleaner. So hopefully, you liked what I showed you here. And I'm actually going to share this demo on my Twitter after the conference. So make sure to follow me there. And the last thing I want to say that Bond is still in alpha version. And I believe that it's not so difficult to get this into production state because Bond is just a thin layer on top of Livewire and Alpine JS. So like all the hard work has already been done. But what I need the most is your feedback. So make sure to try Bond. You can find it on this link. And there's also a link to a Discord server where you can talk to me about it and share your feedback. So hopefully you like Bounds. Let me know what you think. And if you end up in a similar situation like we did with that rewrite, before you sacrifice your sanity to a JavaScript framework, maybe take a look at Bounds first. Thank you. <laughs>